Welcome again. This is Torchbearer Gaming. I'm Axel, here with two of our players for our first session of Tales from by the Hearth. It is a side story series where we cover things that don't happen inside the actual keep, or have a quest necessarily involved, but are important enough to either the character stories or the goings-on of the town to cover. Tonight we're joined by Wellbird Shortnose and Lucien Petrescu. Hello! Good evening. Speak up. Good evening. How you going? And for those who have been keeping up with our episodes, the this story takes place after an episode where these two were traveling together along with... Do you guys remember who was in the episode with you when you found the hammer? Uh... Uh... Luru? No. Well, well Luru was there. Thing? Yeah, Luru was there. He was the one we were getting them. The alchemical it, ingredients. It, it was the one with, uh, it was, yeah, and one of them, one of us died. Ah, yes. It was episode four. Sticky Icky. Mm-hmm. So for anybody who's keeping up, if this takes place after that episode, which, if you watch the episode, we'll do a little bit of a recap just in case you didn't, but... The group was sent in by a group of alchemists to find some ingredients and things for them, but when they happened upon this rather massive hammer that Wellbird actually recognized as a historical artifact from the Hundred Generations War, used by the goblins, to, well, used by the allies of the goblins, the giants, to smash open Dorvan mountain holds and lay siege to them. And they ended up actually using the item on their travels through the dungeon in that episode, but they decided as a group to try to drag it out of there with just the three of them that survived. But Luru left the other two to their their own business after they finished the quest line, and they, I believe this is where we'll pick up, they head on their way to, to the guild hall of the Morningstar Guild. Oh, you, you, oh, now you see, Beans, you get a big hammer like this, and you can put big nails in a big wall. That's not, that's not what the hammer is for. A hammer is for nailing things, just like, just like I, I am. am. It's a sacred object, it, it belongs in the, in the guild hall. Well, of course this does, but I'm just saying, theoretically, that you can build big things with this big old hammer. No, you couldn't. It's not, it's not that kind of hammer. But it's magical. It is, but that does not mean it's for such, such things. You know, we could probably blow the keep up with this if this thing was, uh, was charged and working still. Well, that's why I'm taking it to the hall. So we can blow it up? Uh, blow up part of Ashwell, sure. I mean, oh. I doubt, I doubt it'll work though. I, it's uh, Ashwell's got some dark magic in it. Yeah, probably not. Where well, will we get all our money if Ashwell is gone? I don't know. You We'd could turn over a new you. leaf. You could try turning over a new leaf. Uh, I would not be out of a job. I would simply go somewhere else to, to seek out evil. We could go together. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, and that's final. Unless you, unless you change your ways. Change what ways? I don't do anything wrong. Oh please, you know that's you know that's bullshit. Really? Nah, nah I'm fine. I, I I do everything. It's it's right. This is the way I was brought up. <laughs> the way you were brought up doesn't make it right. The way well you were doing the thing the way you were brought up. Sure. Well, no, not really. Uh. In fact, the way I was brought up, I was quite sheltered. 
Well, you're sheltered right now in that big old armor. Oh, not like that, you dunce, and he like kind of like conks him on the head. Ah. I mean, like. Don't be hitting me. And in that second when you do that, you like let go of the hammer with both hand, one hand to swing at him, and it, like you start to lose your grip. You're like, no, 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 no. you have to compensate when you put both hands back on it because this thing is huge. Okay. 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 The night air starts to get a bit chilly, and it's it's growing dark. So the, each building, you know, has a lantern out front that's illuminating the streets as you're dragging this thing along to get to your loca- your destination. Because it did take you guys quite some time to get out of the keep itself with this hammer, and also with all the traps that you had to evade in that particular situation. Indeed. Which, evading them with this massive hammer in tow was not exactly a pleasant time for our main girl. Oh, yeah, that reminds me, I, I, had, I had fed him some Fixum juice. That was what? fun. But remember, I, I had fed you Fixum juice when you were asking mm-hmm. for a healing potion? And, and, it, uh, just, just, and it ended it, up great? It, it worked out okay for him. I, I, I roleplayed it that he essentially had like an adrenaline rush. Yeah, yeah. Yes, folks, remember, Granny's Fixin' Juice, available only at the Leaky Bitch. For all your fixin' needs. But anyways, eventually you see the very telltale signs of the, the guild hall up ahead. The central building of it, at least, with the two lanterns around the large double doors. Illuminating the, uh, the mural painted walls. And the walls are painted in hues of blue and gold with a starry sky. Fancy. Yes, well. I'll take this in then. How did you ever end up in a place ever end up in a place like this? Like the, oh. the morning star. I don't think I'm that bad. I was born and raised in a monastery dedicated to him. That must have been a pain in the ass. Oh, to... <laughs> I forgot to push, hit push the talk. When I was younger, I thought so. But when you get older, you realize... You take some things for granted. Well, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, they're probably pretty strict in living in a monastery. You couldn't go out and go chase tail or anything. Or go, go, go down with your friends and, and throw rocks at the local people. Or, uh, what other things did I ever do? If you're asking, if you're asking me uh, what it was like, yes, it was very disciplined. I would say smothered. Uh, spent a lot of my mornings studying, you know, studying the holy texts, cleaning things up, you know, very simple, you know, things you would do uh, as a as a boy who lived in a monastery, but. You know, it's, uh, I came out the better for it, so I suppose I can't fault them for it. You know, you might have been, you could have, you know, I look at you, I almost pity you for not having such, such a sheltered life as I did growing up. Yeah, things were hard, but, you know, my life, uh, I ended up here. Got to be friends with you, Beans. I, I didn't I didn't learn to read until I joined the mercenary corps. You didn't learn to read until you joined the mercenary corps. Yeah. Things weren't easy. I don't have a mama or a pop. Neither do I. Well see we're the same then. Uh far from it. Ah, details. 
Right. Well, thank you for bringing, helping me bring this in. Uh, I'll be off then. And he starts trying to drag it inside. Ah, nah, 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 nah. We'll bring it together. I told you. I was going to let you have this if you brought me in with you. Give me a good word. I said I'd talk to them. I really don't think they're going to let you in. You almost trapped it when you, dro when you took one of your hands off it. I'm helping you bring it in, otherwise you ain't dragging this shit in there. <sighs> I doubt they'll let you in. Come on! Besides, I don't know if I can trust you within such a holy sanctum. Oh, you can trust me. You know the guild no. well enough, Lucia. <laughs> this location, it's, it's, a, it's a several buildings all in one giant complex with, like, a yard in between them. It's all fenced off, and the only entrance is the door that you're at, as far as, like, publicly speaking. And it does have a public face. Like, they have a storefront. People can come in here and buy things. Well, they do have to be a member technically. With but, like, he could come in with you. There's no. They're not gonna like boot him out the front door. But they won't let him any further than that, most likely. But you only, only members know how to get in. That's basically what it is. Okay. Okay. So you have a special like key and lock, <sighs> which you're now at the door, so you know, so you can do that. Right. Have to set the, uh, the hammer down. Don't touch anything. And um, he he sets the hammer down, and he um, tells Welbert to look away as he gets out. He, you know, gets the key out from wherever he stole it away. Yeah, and of course the key is like this very delicate. I want to say, like, almost like blown glass key. With, of course, the head of it is shaped like a, a, a six-pointed star. You walk up to the doorway and try to keep it out of his sight while you do this. But, uh, so roll me a sleight of hand check against Welbert's perception. Welbert, roll a lot. Can I, can I roll a, uh, like a stealth to make sure he doesn't see me, like, trying to spot it? <laughs> well, you're both basically, tr like, it, that's inherent. You're both not trying to be right. seen doing what you're doing. That's why you're rolling against each other. But luckily, we're in an urban environment. Yep, give me sleight of hand. Oh, I thought, thought it rolled. I'll roll it again. If you don't have it, you can just hit dex as well. Maybe it's querying. There it is. Alright. So, Wilbur, you definitely see how he does this. While he's doing it, it's pretty simplistic, but also kind of archaic. Mm -hmm. But basically, Lucian walks up to the doorway, and at the, on the door itself, there's an emblem of the star, and he j it kind of like slides a little hidden part of it open and s inserts the glass key. And there's a series <laughs> of clicks, and then the door pops open. And then he tucks the key back away and hides it. But you don't see where he hid the key on himself, though. But you do see how he unlocked the door. Yeah. He's not too concerned. He's just curious. Oh, and the doors kind of slot, like pop open. There's just that little bit of like that pressure. They're just they open, but they don't open. They're openable now. Hmm. No longer sealed. So Lucian can just push it open. We got. Okay. We got. Yeah, you seem does so. Okay, so you push the doors open, and of course there's that that rush of light that you let into the front doors, where from the two lanterns at the sides, as the inside is dimly lit on this portion of it, but you can see where there's a few people moving around inside the front entrance, on the the black stone flooring, 
and there's a bar across the way with a hooded lantern, with a lantern sitting on the corner of it, which is giving off all the light in the room. I will actually move you guys, because I have better map for those, because I'm a psychopath. Oh, fancy. So yes, I push the doors open, and this is the uh, the front room that I mentioned before. It's got, like, displays and things that they sell and other such things. And you can see there's a couple of other people who work here. Like, so one, the woman over here stocking books, and there's a woman over here, like, dusting off the shelving unit. And there's a man standing behind the bar, just kind of cleaning some cups and stuff. Because this place is kind of a, a dual purpose. It's It serves as both a shop for the store, like, for the, uh, the Morningstar, Guild to sell things and make a profit to keep funding it. It, it, it. It's also like a monastery. Like there's another building in the complex that is basically just a straight up church. But it also has served the purpose of housing and offering food and supplies to members of the hunt, the church, and the uh, the wardens. So they do have a bar and food and other such things in the building. This is very much the first time Wellbone's ever seen the place, and it's very kind of like you were expecting more pomp and circumstance. Yeah, it's very Spartan, with like, with the exception of the mat, the display cases and things like that. Like, there's no decorations, there's no fanciness. It's just this black stone structure. It could, you know? it could honestly just be a shop with a bar in it, for all it would concern us. You know, I expect it to be a little more foppish. The servants of Morningstar don't, uh, have no need for pomp and circumstances. Whatever that means. It means we're not as fancy as other churches. Oh. Well, let's drag it in. Let's hope we don't ruin the floor. There, I gave control. It's big. Yes, it is. You come dragging this thing in, and the guy behind the bar is like, he starts to like wave, and then he stops, and he's like, "Ah, in hells." Do I know this guy's name? Uh, you would know he's one of the employees. Yeah, he's um. Franco. Franco, uh, my good man, uh, I, I've brought a, uh, I've brought something that the guild would be interested in. Hello. You've uh, brought a few things, I see. Yes, I, I'll... This one is just here to help me carry it in. I'm Bean's best friend. No, he's not. He is. Don't listen to him. Right then. Um. You two drag that into the storeroom back here. I'll go fetch the guildmaster. Very well. Be on it then. All right, let's uh, let's uh, push it a little bit and uh, turn it. Very well. And then the mouse is active. All right. All right. We should probably turn it clockwise. Do it twice. This wise. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. He's getting like pushed along with the hammer. <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> yes, the uh, you know the storeroom is this the room to the south behind the bar. I see. Oh my god, how are we gonna get behind there? <laughs> oh. uh, well. I, does he realize we're? Oh, oh, we're gonna moon over this thing. Okay, push it down a bit more. Uh, okay. He'll heave and hoe. 
Hey, go ahead and you, you can have Lucian go ahead and give me an athletics check with advantage from Wilward's help. That's okay, uh, I won't have it moved just yet. You guys can easily get it over to the bar, and you're kind of like halfway through the process of picking it over top of the bar. Because you can't get it around behind. Mm -hmm. So Lucian's just got the head like in his hands, just like... <laughs> and Wilbert's just like levying it, trying to hold it down so it doesn't just flop on top of him. Oh, on the man. other side of the bar. Using his body, his, like, problem. Welbert is literally sitting on top of the handle right now, trying to weigh it up. <laughs> oh, man. And that's when, uh, Franco comes back and he's like, Oh, that thing's, uh, heavier than I thought it was, I see. And he comes over to kind of help. Lift with your legs, Lucian! Please! I'm trying! What? <laughs> And it takes a few more minutes and some effort, but eventually I just drag the door away. Whoops. Whoops. But eventually you do manage to drag it into the back row. And get it to a resting spot in the big open area on the floor. Back here in the back room. Yep. Okay. Uh, and uh, and our outsiders usually aren't welcome past this point, are they? No, but you all kind of had to help to get it in here, so you're all back here now. Okay. And the the front goes after he helps you get it in here. He's like the, the boss is on his way through, and he closes the door. Ah! Oh. Did he just shut us in? Is this like one of those seven minutes in heaven sort of thing? I'm sorry, Beans, why are you like that? Ew. No. Don't touch me. Good, good. So wait, can... Is the door... Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll touch your blood, Lucy, uh, Beans, if you need it, but... I ain't, I ain't really interested in touching other fluids. No. <laughs> Stop being too vulgar. I'm just being honest. Uh, how about you just stop, okay? Just stop. Stop what? Just stop. Everything. There, there is a doggo just kind of sitting here watching you guys in confusion. Oh, there's a dog? <laughs> it's like 10 feet away from you, sitting on the floor next to the desk. desk. I pet the doggo. Pet the doggo. Doggo is happy. So, no. by way, so by everything you want me to just sit here, stand still, and not say anything? Okay, I can do this. This is a challenge. I'm still hearing words coming out. Well, we'll just try to, like, stand as still and quiet as he can, possibly. Possible. Possible. Yeah, Lucy just, like, just, like, leans up against the wall, maybe, like, you know, peroses the, the book and pets the doggo's head for a bit as he enjoys the momentary silence. Beans, this is hard. Oh, keep doing it! You're you're winning! You're winning a game! Oh boy, that means you owe me money if I win! No? That's not, that's not the case at all. Well, that's okay, because you already owe me money. No? That's yeah. not the case at all. Oh, God. And eventually, the back door in the southwest corner, or the, uh, south, yeah, southwest corner of the room does pop open, and another man in nice finery, and ar like a little bit of armor, but mostly just finery, comes waltzing in with a helmet on. 
Wellbird will salute him. Hello, I'm Wellbird. I'm Lucian's best friend. I what? thought I told you to be. To, I thought I told you to be quiet. Well, you said there was no no bet, so it's fine. Yes, you know this man very quite well as far as like reputation, less so than actual direct interaction so much. This is the guildmaster, Brandusa Lupe. He is also a minor noble of the Imperium. What's his name? Brandusa. Brandusa. Brandusa? Brandusa Lupe. Brandusa, yeah. He kind of enters the room, closes the door behind him, eyes the hammer for a minute. But he goes, Brother Lucian, I see you have brought me a very interesting artifact. Indeed. Uh, Mount Render. Quite. This is. I've never seen one of. In person, I've only read the stories. I see you also bring one of your companions. Best friend! No, oh, he is. <laughs> no, and uh, keep an eye on him. He's. <laughs> I'm yeah, a boy. I only needed him to carry the hammer in. Do not forget, brother. Even those who do not hold the faith are still of use in the war against the evils. Yes, of course. I just doubt his motives is all. Now, uh, Mr. Shortnose, yes? Well, but Shortnose, sir. I have heard. You are quite, uh, what's the word? Infamous around the time, yes? Better infamous than a nobody. Ah, oh, quite, quite. And he kind of pulled, like, Puts uh, ink or the pen into the ink for a second, and then kind of etches into the book a little bit that's in front of him on the desk. This is uh, quite the find. I assume you were in the keep, yes? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Interesting. I have not heard of one of these being found outside of Dorvin Holds of old. I believe the the goblins have pretty much claimed all of the remaining specimens. It is quite a find. Well, indeed, sir. Well, thankfully we were able to find it before any other goblins could have taken it. Indeed, it is in very good shape, despite... And he kind of walks over to it a bit more and kind of runs his hand along it and through the grooves of the ruins and stuff. And he's like, Naturally, it is completely devoid of power at this point, but it is still... Magnificent, and it's still very capable of destruction. I would have taken it back home, but I, would, I felt I had a duty to my best friend Beans over there. And you have done very well, then. This will... I do not believe we can repower it. It would be far too dangerous to do so anyway. It could be stolen if we did such, and then used against us. We cannot allow that. The barony must come first. Despite as much as I would love to see this artifact restored. For now, I fear it is probably best that it stay inside of a, a display case and kept safe. I see. Uh, is there any way we could maybe have perhaps a fraction of its power? It is giant magic. There is no fraction. Giants were very much a species of people who all or nothing, yes. I see. That is why they do not exist very much anymore, I think. They could not adapt to the changes to the culture now. That makes that makes sense. Well I had. How much do you know about this hammer, Goblin? Uh well I know that I was all involved with the uh Cracking open the Dwarven homes. I, I remember being taught that here and there back when I was living on the streets. I uh, got in some bookstores once I uh, learned to read. Got really interested in some stuff, but uh, you know. Oh well, not too much about the specific one. Indeed, yes, these were indeed used by, according to the legends, the stone giants in particular had a fondness for them. Others did use them, but they were created mostly by stone. They were used in, in tandem with 
massive armies of goblin shock troopers to invade Dorvan Holds by cracking them open quite literally. And then, of course, waves upon waves of goblins carrying small arms would enter and, well, it was a war of attrition from there. And we all know how that ended. The dwarves are no more. Thank goodness. Indeed, they were quite a hearty people. Great enemies. Great enemies. We'll never know. My great, 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 great grandfather fought in the war. He used to tell. He passed. They passed stories of him down through the family. He he fought a dwarf in, in combat once. He said. And he never wanted to do it again. Really? Yeah, they, that, uh, they, they, they wielded some very strange weaponry, I was told. They, uh, wield, they harnessed the very power of the sky itself and threw it at their enemies. Uh, uh, like, like the rain? rain? No, like lightning, my friend. Ah! That's quite the... That's quite the... That's quite the accomplishment. Indeed, oh, without using the magical spells, being able to hurl bolts of lightning is quite impressive. How are they ever able to do that? This is a good question. Not even your people can reverse engineer the technology like they did much of what makes them so very industrious now. I've. Been, uh, you are from. Big city, yes, I can tell from accent. Gabblebass, huh? Yes, yes, that is it. I have heard a story, actually, yes. The foundation of that city, the, the walls, these hammers were used as the basis for the towers. I told you, Beans! It's a strange way of building buildings, though, if you ask me. Using weapons of destruction as foundation. That seems like a that seems like a, a bad thing waiting to just happen. Yeah, the goblins are uh, no offense, but uh, questionable ideas sometimes. Yes, I I accept this. My old friend Bomo one time decided that it was a good idea to go down to the local ironworks and uh, see if we could steal some iron from there to make some. Uh, Make a, make a fort in a street out of a bunch of iron. Make our own weapons and make our own country. It, it, it didn't turn out too well. He, uh, he fell in. Oof. Hey, imagine oh. that. Oh. It's, what a... That's ironic. Suffice to say he had a metallic sheen afterwards. I'm sure he was very shiny. I think they actually, like, uh, put him out in front of the ironworks to, to warn people not to come, not to do that. See, that, I, that is an example of opposite end of spectrum, yes? Good idea. I, I remember one time going to visit him, and uh, he was just covered in, in bread poop. I mean, that was always his dream. He had some weird taste, but, you know. Well, uh, I'm glad he's in a better place. Perhaps. I do not know much of goblin religion, so to speak. Too, so to speak. Well, they're just shrugs. <laughs> that aside, though, this is a... Uh, I, I do not know what else to say. I, you have done a great service for our order, my brother. Does he say that to yes, Lucian? It's, it's my duty. Duty comes in many many uh, forms, yes. But this this is this is impressive work. Most do not. Uh, the keep is a dangerous place. Some would shy away. Yes. Well, some would, but uh, I can't let that happen. I can't easily shy away from something and. Where the old gods might be at work. Indeed, you are, you are very vigilant. I give you. You are good at what you do. You are one of our best. Uh, 
uh, he kind of, oh, thank you, you know, and he kind of, you know, he, he looks very touched by that. He very rarely lets his, you know, lets his emotion show, but, you know, he looks, he looks very, you know, touched. And he just kind of, like, you see him kind of idly, like, it's almost like an unconscious tick kind of thing. He's just tapping his hand on the pommel of this, this curved sword, very ornamented looking, like, saber kind of weapon he's carrying on his hip. Just kind of tapping his hand on that thing, like he's not thinking of what he's trying to do, what to do from here with this. Hell, Beads and I have been quite fun quite through a lot in the, in the, uh, the keep. Saved his life a few times. I am we sure saved each indeed. other's lives. That is, it's 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 yes, indeed, yes. When you go to the keep, you do not, you must save one another's lives, yes. It is very dangerous, yes. As you say, even even those who do not uh, worship Morningstar can be used by him in the greater works of things. Well, from what I understand, things are taking a turn for the, uh, the better, no? You have the, uh, the keepers been delved quite frequently late, of late, and uh, with that, it, the monsters do not stray out as often. The food goes to them. He's junk, of course. It's been going well. We did lose someone today, during today's show, but... Ah, uh, this is, uh, is a pity. It Brave is. souls are hard to come by, yes. They, they got glippy-clap. Not, they were killed by things. They clap. They clap for flapper. Yeah. Black oozes. He's trying to say. Oh, yes, that is a very bad death. Very painful. I hope she, she or he passed out from shock before the actual pain was too much. I'm sure. I think One would she not was. want to be conscious for the entire experience. I was sure. I should. And he kind of holds up his uh, his left hand. There's one finger missing. He's like, "How did I run in with a slime myself?" It's... Oh dear! My morning store. That sounds terrible. It chopped off your finger. No, it ate it. Oh. Dissolved it right off of my hand. That makes a lot more sense. If not for the quick thinking of one of these doctors that was with us, he would have eaten my whole hand, likely, and much more. But he, he had a Reagent it stopped the, the consumption. Well, th thank Morningstar for that. Do you think fingers taste good, Beans? No, uh, I've never I've, had any. Well, do you think you ever would? I mean, like, like you just imagine what it tastes like. It's probably not much on it, it's but, a lot of skin and bone. Human fingers? No, I, I can't say I've ever felt the desire to eat well, well, humanoid fingers. Well, not necessarily humans, just fingers in general. I can't say I've had that desire, no. Are an adventurous eater? No, I'd rather not just resort- I'd rather not resort to cannibalism. And please, don't talk about such things in such a holy place. You know, one time back when I was in Gobbleva, I, I fished out a, 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 a weird-looking fish that was uh, in one of the, the slime pools around the city. And I had a hand on it. Like, like had, it had a thumb growing at the side. It was really weird. It tasted odd. And I, I don't think I ever got over it. That... <laughs> he doesn't really know how to respond to that. He just kind of looks over at... Brandescu, or whatever his name is, and... Just... Brandusa. Brandusa, yeah. And just like, yeah, this is what I... Just kind of like with a look on his face, like, this is what I put up with. Hey, I, I still get stinky poops. I think it did something to my guts. That is regrettable, my friend, but, uh... I think the conversation must be segued now to something else, yes? I it's assume like the um, as you are not a member of this guild, you seek some form of compensation. Yes, I do. Beans was saying that he'd put in a good word for me. Uh, the, you, he does not need to. I am right here. Uh, this is my home. This is my. I am the master of this guild, and the word has been put in, my friend. 
I'm glad. It is good to meet your acquaintance, sir. It is uh, always good to meet adventurers in the region, yes. While you may not be one of the faithful who serve the purposes we, serve, we seek, nonetheless. Lucian kind of just takes a step forward and just like leans over, whispers in one of his ears, just be like, you know, so I told him I put him in good work, but be careful with him. He's, uh, you, you know the, you know what he's done around town. He's, he can be very slimy when he wants to be. Then he just backs away. Yeah, he kind of chuckles to himself, just. But, uh, if that is all you require, then perhaps you're not so bad after all here. I mean, if you're, you're willing to have some sort of reward for this as well, I'd, I'd be, I'd be very glad for your magnanimousness, magnanimity, uh, ma magma, magma flow. What, what is it? You know I would hope it is not the last one you said that. That would be most unfortunate. Yeah, I think so. Why, 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 why isn't the reward a... Well, the reward should be the, the knowing that you did a good deed and that, you, and that you've done good work. Isn't that reward enough, Wellbird? Well, unfortunately, I can't really eat good deeds. Well, no, but... Not, not can you screw them. No, but, uh, you, but, uh, but certainly food tastes better when you know you've done a good deed. Does it? Of course. I don't know, I've never tried. Well, why don't you give it a try? Yes, why don't you join us for a dinner, my friend? Oh! Fancy food! There. The girl hall... ...welcomes your company to a limited degree, we say. Yes? I'm glad. Both of you have actually gained two reputation with the, uh, the Morningstar Guild. Oh boy. Which, if you haven't actually seen it on your character sheets yet, it's there on the, sec on the uh, bio page. Yeah, I got, I got five reputation. I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm really up there. But yes, the, the, uh, the butcher has prepared a roast goat. Oh! Ah, uh, mutton. Could use a good mutton. In the meantime, we can uh, see that this hammer is put in its rightful place, yes? I certainly hope so. I think if, if Bean's case it anymore, though, he might break his back. I'm gonna actually go ahead and just Where'd it go? What? What? <laughs> this must be the work of the old gods! They stole it! <laughs> Where are you? No. <laughs> there we go. So yes, Walbert has been invited on it to a. basically has a limited. like, they might let you in the front door if you yeah. ask, kind of thing at this point. But you can also stay for dinner. Hooray! I get food. Good food. Yeah. That's his, I guess that is his reward. But in a way, Lucian's trying to be like, isn't, is like, isn't a job well done reward enough? Hey. <laughs> and it's out in the front room now? Well, where is the, so where is this bank, so where is this banquet? Head out through the door you came in. Okay. Sure. I smell food this way. But look at look at the front door now, or towards the, the big glass gate the case now. Oh, look at that! I snorted up some snot. Nicely done. Nice Rip. Thing. Well, Wilbur, you've done a good deed. It's good to help people, isn't it? Yeah, 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 sure. 
<sighs> I'm I'm all good with helping you, Beans. And yes, the food is in through this door. Yes, I just wanted to show the uh, hammer in the actual display case up front now. Right, well, I suppose you've earned this meal. I guess we both have. I'm quite famished, actually. And there's, there's quite a spread laid out for the, on the table. Like, there's, there's the mutton as the main course, but there's, like, fruits and vegetables. And those, like, Is so there a place like, for... Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to... Like a loaf of bread or other shit like that. It's, yeah. it's your full-on, full meal. Is there a place for Lucian? Cause, well, first of all, I assume Lucian's got like a tunic and you know, s s you know, clothes underneath his armor. But you know, Lucian would like to, you know, take off his armor first before sitting down and enjoying a meal. Yep. One sec. Why is that not letting me? Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. That's why. I was like, why isn't it letting me move the thing that I'm trying to move? Can you see back there? Uh, not very much. No, yeah, I can't. There's, no, there's, like, there's bunks back here. This is just a bunk house. Probably where Lucian sleeps. Yep, you can duck in there and change out your armor and everything like that and come back out. Yeah, he just goes in and basically goes to the bed that he usually sleeps at and probably keeps his armor at and takes it off, uh, returns to, to eat. Wherever uh, Lucian sits, no matter if it's like the, it's just the three of them at the table. Uh, Wilbert will sit next to him, <laughs> like right next to him. Luc I mean, like he probably hasn't seen Lucian without his full armor on before, so it's probably really jarring for Wilbert when Lucian comes out and is just like a regular guy. Yep, hey, regular schmuck. Beans. Why do you wake up that little furry rag on your face? Furry rag? Oh, is, is that a beard? Uh, yes it is. It looks good! He gives you a little, like, half-hearted thumbs up. Obvious lie. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, just for a physical rundown, um... Lucian has auburn hair, his skin is tan, his eyes are blue, and he's six foot one, two hundred and thirteen pounds. Yep. He's a little over forty. He's a big guy. For you. He's a he's a quite tall, well built, middle aged man. Lucian just, you know, sits down and enjoys his meal. He tries to Keep Welbert, you know, try, you know, tries to make Welbert keep Welbert on his best behavior with like table manners and shit, like, like, no, like slurping or shit like that. I don't know. Good luck with that. Welbert will basically be doing his very best, not necessarily because uh, Lucian's telling him, but because it's like I got, I got fancy food. I gotta act like a fancy person now. Mm -hmm. Still, he, you know, he, he like picks up things with his fingers every now and then, just like throws it in his mouth. He's like has his elbows on the table, but he, he's acting so very, uh, he's, very. He's calm. trying his best. Yeah. Which is more than most goblins. Like goblin society degenerated. Yes. The more in, the more simplistic life got, the easier it got, the less morality and all that they have. They they become very vulgar, horrible. Sin-riddled people. To quote, uh, to, to, to quote Mr. Meeseeks, Ooh, he trying! <laughs> because at this point, you guys have gotten what you came here to do. The hammer is now on display. You met the guildmaster. You've gotten a nice meal. Well, we're really pouring spices all over it. Purely because he can. Yep. Why are you putting cinnamon on that? Why not? <laughs> Lucian's just, uh... I mean, he's enjoying the meal. He's de He definitely feels like he's earned it. 
and uh, it's it's a nice meal. So yeah, he's. I mean, he, I mean, he's not like best. I mean, he's not like super posh and proper either. He's, I mean, he's you know kind of like like he's you know like he like he's not. You know, I mean, he's he's he knows like basic table manners, and that's it. You know, I mean, he knows like not to yeah. do certain things, but he's still like you know. At the enjoying, end of the day, so. the people that use this place and Lucian himself, they're soldiers of their god. That's all they are. Mm-hmm. They're not any fancy special people. They're just soldiers that serve a specific purpose. A yeah. higher cause, in their mind, at least. Exactly. Yeah, unless there's anything else you guys need to cover, I think that pretty much sums up the side story we had in in planning. I suppose so. Yeah. Unless you can think of anything. Nah, man, he got his, uh, he got the hammer in. He's good. And you found out a little more history about the hammers. Yep. (sighs) Wilbur kept to his deal to not ask for a reward, but only for the good word in. Mm-hmm. So yes, from here, this point on, and in future sessions, Wilbur can actually make visits to the, the guild hall now. <laughs> unless he does something to lose reputation. I, I, I know what you're implying. Uh, it could be a number oh. of things, but yes, that is definitely a big part of it. Oh man. Well, that was fun. I spent half the time not being able to, to key up because I was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need to have Wilbur tell more uh, tall tales and stories. Yes, that, that was fun. Yeah, I'm that glad was. you guys enjoyed it. I'm glad we finally got around to doing this. I want to start doing more of these side stories. I think they're a great little, like, just quick plunge into the universe of the Ashwell and kind of help flesh it out, because that's what we're doing, honestly. Like, every session of Ashwell, we're learning more about the setting. We're building the world as we play it. Mm-hmm. And I'm having a, I'm having a blast as doing so as the DM. I know a lot of the players are seeming to really get into it and start to really enjoy the world building as we go. And I'm glad to see it, because as a DM, that's all you ever want, is for players to get into your world. Yeah, man, I know how that feel. And it's a blast, and I guess that's where we'll start to wrap up, so um, this was a good sesh- good first side session. I going to definitely start poking people about trying to get some more of these going, because these are good times. This was Tales from, uh, by the Hearth, number one. Hammer it out. Bye! And, yeah, bye! Bye-bye!